podcast but I, I would like to get Daniel's commentary. Of course, he's on with me usually on Wednesdays. He's the guy behind downloadedcontent.com, the author of Then Came the Flood, so on and so forth. And, you know, here we are, Daniel, discussing Alex Jones, the what now? Performance artist. I'm so, real. I'm real. Gay frogs are real. It's real. It's all real. <laughs> Dude, that wasn't man. bad, Daniel. That's Thanks, pretty man. good. You, you got to get closer to your microphone, but yeah. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that was good. I, I I heard the part about the gay frogs, but it kind of faded frog, out a little. Gay, gay frogs are real. It's real. I'm real. Gay frogs are real. How does he know about the gay frogs? <laughs> How does he know uh, good that, question. That, that, that that percentage of frogs in Texas are gay? <laughs> I well, mean, you I, know... Spends without a lot of time a, in the pond. <laughs> without taking a survey, you know, unless he's got, you know, inside quotes from Kermit himself, I don't know, man. It's, it's an odd thing. It's an odd thing. Now, look, dude, all right, for one thing, in Alex Jones's defense, okay, in his defense, and I think anybody, and I don't have kids, man, but I got a dog, okay? So uh, if my kids were on the line, custody for my kids, I would probably do anything I possibly could in a, you know, in a court, even to the destruction of a media or performance art thing, even to, to its destruction for my kids. Okay, so in his defense, I'll, I'll say, I, you know what I mean? If my kids were on the line, I would say anything that I thought would help me get custody of them. Okay. So there's that. I'll defend him for that. No, look, and I, and I agree with you. You're going to have to get a little closer to your mic. But, uh, but, I, but I agree with you, man. Uh, you know, I, I, I get that part of it. And it could be very possible. But if that's the case, you know, you're making a statement in court. And that can get you in trouble later if you're making false statements. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it seems to me as though you, you got to either say something that can't be proven contradictory to the reality, or you have to tell the truth one or the other, that that's the way you got to proceed in a court. Cause otherwise, you know, you got other troubles and this will continue on and on. Right. Mm, well, you know, that is what it is. So I, I don't know how he's going to deal with the, with the, uh, the fallout. Okay. What I, what I will say is that I think that the Infowars nightly news like just started and nothing on Infowars is being, is mentioning this at all. Like nothing. They're not talking about this at all on InfoWars, right? Are they going to do that later? I don't know, okay? But, you know, I don't know if you could hear it in my voice because I think this is hilarious. I think that it's absolutely hilarious because in the alternative media or the new media, whatever you want to call it, we always hear, you know, about authenticity and being genuine. Okay, now I got two words for anybody who's still like an Alex Jones acolyte. Deborah Medina. Okay? Mm -hmm. You guys remember Deborah Medina? Oh, absolutely. I remember Deborah Medina. And uh, <laughs> Jack Blood can tell you a lot about Deborah Medina. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think when that happened, now, even when I was listening to Alex Jones years ago, I kind of knew, I was like, well, this is a shtick. It's a shtick. However, He's the first guy to do it, okay? He's the first guy to run with the whole the alternative media thing and get on the Internet and say some of the things he was saying. So it's the best that we got. So you have to kind of listen to him. But then when, the do when he opened up that doorway, and I tip my hat to him, thanks for opening the door, but I still see you for what you are. And that is exactly what your attorney said today, that you paid him a lot of money to say. You're a performance artist and have been. Now, a performance artist, like let's say a juggler, they have to work with real juggle things or whatever you call them, okay? Mm. But they're still performing. And so he was juggling and has been juggling real things for the most part, but he just paid a dude a lot of money to tell it like it is in a court of law uh, to say that he's a performance artist, right? Right. Makes sense. Although, although I will say that Bill Cooper... Uh, you know, came before Alex Jones, but you know, 
splitting hairs now. You know, he, he went on the internet. He was on shortwave radio, uh, you know, and, and, uh, much earlier than, than Jones was mainly because Cooper's older. Um, you know, but, but again, same kind of thing, you know, uh, how, how much legitimacy do you give anybody who does this? But then again, uh, you know, th- this is, this is where the roots of this media are. Let's be honest. Uh, well, uh, as much as I disagree with Cooper and I disagree with Jones, uh, you know, like you said, they they both mutually open doors yeah, they, for exactly what we're doing today. Yeah, sure, they open doors. Agreed. And see, and this right here, I'm glad that this has happened because you know that I've harped about this on the air and and really off the air. Hey, how many of you guys who and I'm, I'm I love American Freedom Radio. Uh, you know, I love Danny and you and everything. But I'll, I'm just going to be honest. How many people in alternative media mimic? And get their news from Infowars, and then just regurgitate it. Okay, mm. so mm-hmm. now what we have with Alex Jones coming out and having people uh, that he's paid for say he's a performance artist. Now what we're going to have is a separation of the sheep and the goat. Okay, we're going to have a separation there, and I think this is a great thing, and this is a great opportunity for people who are really interested in the truth to pay attention to some of the the repeaters. Like David Icke would say, a repeater of Dave of Alex Jones. We're going to see how they play this story on, in alternative media, whether it's it, whatever network it happens to be, and how they're going to spin this. Now, uh, when was it that we we decided to go ahead and I don't know uh, bomb Syria? When was this? Was this last week or the week before? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I just and I know I'm not going to drop the f bomb on your show, but on my wall after that happened, I was so disgusted. That And it has nothing to do with Trump. If you think that Trump actually made that decision, if you think anybody actually voted for Trump, you know, okay, you, you're not even listening to this show for one thing. So, you know, and you know I don't like to talk about Trump because I just think it's a joke. But, okay, I put on my Facebook wall, I was like, okay, right after I heard that we were bombing Syria, I said, hey, look, all you Alex Jones folks who happen to be on my friends, let's just go F yourself right now. You know why? Because I'm not saying that you, because you voted for Trump, you contributed to us violating our own constitution again by uh, performing a war crime. I'm not saying that, but your mentality of going along with Alex Jones while he was pumping Trump after uh, claiming to be a Ron Paul liberty type guy. Dude, look, you can't go from Ron Paul to Donald Trump, okay? You can't do that logically. <laughs> that, 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 that floors me. That absolutely floors me. Go ahead. It, it, yes. That is, it's, you can't do that, dude. You can't, man. You can't go from non-interventionalist to, well, Alex Jones is now supporting Donald Trump. Dude, you just told me right there that you, it, during the liberty movement, the only reason you were there at the caucuses is because Alex Jones told you to be there. Oh, and by the way, was he at his local city halls during that time he was telling you to get active? No, he was not. I'll tell you what I did see him do. I did see him go down to, I think, their capital in in Houston when they were having a legitimate uh, Second Amendment rally and then busted up to draw attention to himself. Dude, okay, is Alex Jones a performance artist? I don't know, dude. When he first started selling vitamins and supplements and stuff that's supposed to help you lose weight, this dude's still looking like... And I'm not trying to make a personal attack, dude, but don't be selling me diet pills if you're still fat as hell, okay? You got more chin, you know what I'm saying? You got more chins in the Chinese phone book, like whatever that movie is where they said that joke, and you're going to sit there and tell me that super male whatever it is still works? Shut up, dude. For real. For real. I mean, okay, so every product on, on Alex Jones's stuff is, is about the end of the world. All right. You think that suddenly he's going to come out one day and say it's all over? No, he's going to keep propagating fear. Why? Because it gets you going to his shop, and homeboy's got to pay forty three thousand dollars a month to his kid, or excuse me, his his kid's baby maker. Okay. So no doubt, man, if he can perpetuate World War Three, he's going to do it because his stuff's going to go up. Homeboy's got some alimony paying his bill, man. Dude. So I don't know, man, but I do. Here's what I do know. There was this homeboy. He was on my Facebook wall. I ain't going to call him out by name, but this dude was like uh, at the caucuses with me back in 08 and 2012. And he was this dude was like all about Alex Jones. This dude was like burn candles and stuff. I imagine like, Alex Jones <laughs> in full war. All right. 
So when I put that on my wall, I said, hey, all you Alex Jones folks who, who helped us bomb Syria, go F yourself. This dude, man, oh, man, he, ooh, he, ooh, he was not too happy with me and chided me, made some personal attacks, and then, then he, he unfriended me. He didn't feel that I had the right to look at his wall. Dude, I never seen this dude's wall. I didn't have to see this dude's wall. All I had to do was go to Infowars.com. Anything, that's all this dude had. That was his life. So what's this dude going to do now? Now that Alex Jones comes out and says that he's a performance artist, this dude who has staked his very identity with everything that has come out of Alex Jones's freaking mouth is now a performance act. This dude's going to go hang himself with some flaws, man, I think. You know, I'm not trying to encourage that. I'm not trying to, like, push him to go do that, okay? But I'm Headlines saying, tomorrow. Mass I'm, suicide. Yeah. yeah. Alex, Al- Alex Jones Alex Jones. Yeah. 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 Mass suicide. Alex Jones lost 7,000 fans last night. So, but it, wow. But I'm pissed off about it. And, 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 and the reason I'm pissed off about it, man, is because this dude – and look, I, hey, uh, there's a sucker born every minute. Alex Jones just – he saw his avenue, bro. But it's it's the people who are still listening to Alex Jones and think this dude is genuine that are going out there, and then you end up with situations uh, like with the bombing of Syria. And then, like, I'm, I'm sitting here like, okay, well, what's Alex Jones got to say about this as a non-interventionalist? This dude goes on for 20 minutes on one of his Facebook Live videos explaining why it's okay for Trump to use political theater when it wasn't okay before he supported Trump for other politicians to use political theater. Well, this is the real reason. This is the real reason that uh, Donald Trump bombed Syria. Well, uh, so he lied. So he, it's, it's just an act. Look, you're trying to get away from the point that he bombed Syria. He violated the Constitution. He violated non-interventionalism. That, that's what, because what? You're afraid to cut your nose off to spite your face, dude? But it's that mentality. And it's of the mentality. And I'm sorry if I'm eating up your airship, but I'm a little... I think it's just ironic. You guys out there need to think for yourselves, man. You need to think for yourselves. Why? Because when you don't think for yourselves, when you don't weigh things in the balance that come across uh, the Internet or the radio or the television, things like the bombing of Syria happen. Because you trusted somebody else to inform you. You get people you know, killed, man. Well, and the amazing thing is that, look, you, you said it's a crime. It actually is. This is a sovereign nation, regardless of what you think of it. We utilized weapons on it. What, how else do you define an act of war? This was an act of war. Okay, now, was it an effective act of war? Apparently not. <laughs> okay, so to me, it looks like a whole lot of stagecraft supported by a whole lot of stagecraft. I mean, obviously, before you roll out, you know, the monkeys and the lion tamers and everything else, you got to let the clowns go first, right? So this is the circus, man. This is the circus. We literally took a reckless action against a sovereign nation, you know, sort of like that thing we started off taking against a place called Iraq, and eventually we completely destroyed, balkanized, and absolutely uh, decimated the population of a bystander nation under false pretenses. But hey, who, who's counting, right? How many times is that going to have to happen before people start to think about maybe I should pay attention to what's actually being done instead of the hype and the rhetoric from people that are just performance artists? You know, you're, you're, you're dead on, Daniel. What can I say? Man, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to keep it real, dude. I mean, it, it, it's funny. I mean, I think it is funny to me because of the personal thing where the guy made a personal attack on my wall because he's an Alex Jones acolyte. So I'm kind of like reveling in the fact that now Alex Jones just – look, dude, Alex Jones just paid an attorney a lot of money to say he's a performance artist. You people out there who are just going to defend Alex Jones to the death, I need to hear – you know what? I don't even need to hear it. Okay, I don't even need to hear an explanation or a defense for that. All right, he just paid a guy to say he's a performer. He's an actor. All right, actors have to use real props. So I'm not slighting that something you hear from Alex Jones may be real. Okay, but I'm saying, look, dude, uh, everybody wants to be a part of this group where they're uh, they're the they have a super secret knowledge that nobody else has. That goes from organized religion to where you get your news, okay? But 
look, dude, if you really want to be that way, make it a real small super society of minority and make it just yourself. Don't listen to everything that Alex Jones has to say or Chuck Ocelli or Barry Prince or anybody and just swallow it. Because you could, you know what I'm saying? And me and you have talked about this a lot, off air and on air. We understand the responsibility of putting our faces uh, to a microphone and saying stuff because you know for a fact, Chuck, you have listeners that, are, that it's not your fault that are going to eat up anything you say. You know what I mean? To their detriment, if you were so mm. inclined to do that, you know. And so I'm looking. We're all looking at. A, a, we are, we've been in, at World War Three for a minute now, but we're talking about a hot war now. We are on the verge of a hot war. And I'm sorry, you need to ask yourself one question. Did Alex Jones and what comes out of, of his thing, his machine, help to perpetuate that or postpone that? That's a critical question where it gets serious. And, uh, you know, it, I don't know, maybe if, uh, we, if all-out war breaks loose, he's going to have enough iodine to, to give everybody or seeds that we can put in all of our vaults, because I'm sure that all of you out there can afford your own vault, right? And your own bunker with all your own ammunition, right? Because you because you've been stockpiling mm. since Alex Jones scared the living hell out of you. You know, saying I'm sorry, didn't mean a rant there, but performance artist, okay. Well, look, and 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 I know that you had to get that off your chest. That's why I brought you in. Uh, I, I didn't expect to, but I, but I thought to myself, you know, because you kind of we messaged back and forth there, and I said, "No, I need to get Daniel's take on this because I know it's going to be right." Well, and uh, you know, I always tell people, "Look, look, I always tell people, no matter what it is I'm presenting, look at it for yourself. Think about this. I'm giving you my thoughts. Take it and run with it." Do better with it. Matter of fact, take it and make something better out of it. Come back and tell me that I'm wrong about the things that are upsetting me. Please, come Chuck, back and do that. Chuck, I'm happy. Chuck, you, yeah. know, you know me. Me and you both, we have to navigate some very precarious waters. I mean, you got to fish where the, where, where the fish are at, okay? So me and you actually have to go on other radio shows uh, with hosts who me and you both know full friggin' well. They're just repeating what Alex Jones says. Yes. That is what they're doing. They're trying to duplicate something uh, for to turn a profit, okay? All of you cats like that out there, stop for a minute and think about th this because you're creating the illusion that you're doing investigative journalism and you're not, okay? Going to Infowars.com is not investigative journalism. It's not perpetuating the same mantra from this guy or from people like him is not, it's not genuine, man. It, it promote critical thinking. Promote individuality. Promote that, not vitamins. I mean, I'm all about vitamins, dude. But come on, man. It, it's, it's ridiculous and it's harmful to, to what's going on in our country and our world uh, to sit there and cut your nose off to spite your face, man. Look, as far as I'm concerned, if you ever supported Ron Paul, you haven't voted since 2012. Pfft, that's just what I'm saying, dude. I'm sorry. You know, and I got a lot of close friends who were Trump supporters who used to be Ron Paul people. I don't understand that one bit. Not one bit. Okay? I'm not going to get all upset and nasty with them about it, but I'm still scratching my head about it. You know? Well, and, and you know what's sad about that? And, and I've tried to explain this, and, and people call me a liberal and everything else. Uh, the truth is this, when I was 19, I guess, I, I think I was 18 or 19, either way, during that presidential selection process, I voted for Bill Clinton, right? Sorry, I was a kid and I thought it was cool. He was playing a saxophone. But ever since then, do you know how many votes I've cast in, in a presidential selection? I, I'd guess none. Exactly zero. Yeah. Exactly zero. I almost got behind Ron Paul. Almost. But then I felt as though it was going to be hijacked and destroyed. And and I'm sorry to say that's pretty much I, I stick by that. I mean, some people argue with me to this day. Well, I'll tell you what, dude. The people who were actually in the political process like myself during that whole thing with Ron Paul, we knew full well that voting for him was, was nothing. That wasn't our strategy. Our strategy was to become delegates and sweep the convention. Okay? That's the real people who knew what was really going on. Mm. Voting – look. Trump didn't get the, pop, the the popular vote, people. 
your voting does nothing in this country. That is a corporation in the District of Columbia, and they elect a CEO, a board of directors, not you. Just, you need to get in your head. The United States of America and America are two different things. Okay, Being a, a United States citizen and being a sovereign American are two different things. Being a sovereign American it has nothing to do with that, that company, that corporation that is representing us on a global scale. And they're mm-hmm. pissing everybody off. And guess what, man? Hey, the bill always comes due, to, to quote somebody other than me, because I didn't say that originally. I'm not going to take credit for it because I'm not a performance artist, but sometimes I am. Um, <laughs> the bill comes due, bro. The bill comes due. Okay. Listen, you 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 write enough checks, somebody's going to cash it out of your ass. Bottom line, uh, and and we're almost out of time here in the hour, but uh, I, I will give the closing thoughts to Daniel here, because he's doing so well. You know, let's not forget in the next hour we're going to have Dean Clifford with us. I have no idea where that's going to go, but hey, maybe we'll mention this to Dean. It'll be two hours on the performance artist aspect of this all. But but, but I, I really hope not, because I think we have much more productive things to get to. What do you think, Daniel? Uh, yeah, there, there's other stuff to me. I, I think this is important because he does have a, a huge sway over people. And I would just like to call this out. You guys out there in, quote, alternative media, and you know who you are, okay, who are just perpetuating Alex Jones and just repeating Alex Jones, you need to be honest, you need to be intellectually honest, and you need to really have a soul at this point and quit. You need to quit. Okay, the reason I, I'm on your show, Chuck, is because I know you personally, and I know that you're like a real guy. You are really a critical thinker. You're really in it for a higher and better purpose than to turn a profit. You'd like a profit, and everybody go out there and donate to Chuck Ocelli's site. Okay, help him. Because I'll tell you right now, and I've told you to this to the, your face, Chuck, the minute that you head south, I'll be the first one slamming you. I'll be the first one to say, stop listening to Chuck O'Jelly. But for the time being, everybody needs to, to not listen or listen and then make your own damn mind up. But this is ridiculous, Boy. dude. This is ridiculous that, look, anything that he says after this, this today, that he's a performance artist, really pick it apart, anybody who's listening. Uh, I can justify murder if you give me enough time, <laughs> you know. If you give me enough time, I can justify murder. So, now, but what you can't take away is he just paid a dude a lot of money to say that he's a performance artist. Are we not entertained? Are we not entertained? And that is the ultimate question here throughout all of this stuff, political, social, etc. It's amazing that this came out. I got to tell you guys that I, 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 this is why I find it particularly aggravating that there are so many people that are pushing this idea that I'm sort of like him. <clears throat> I'm not. This is actually who I am. <laughs> you know, I, I, I wish I could claim that I created a performance artist character that, uh, that, that, that goes, I, I, I really, I haven't done that. If you guys want that, let me know. Maybe I'll try it. We'll see how it goes. But, you know, I'm going to create some weird characters, guys. So I, I don't know if you want that. You know, you've gotten a taste of what my real head is like. Uh, if we get into me creating characters, I think it's going to get real scary real quick. But you know what? Some people like to be scared, don't they, Daniel? Gay frogs. Gay they frogs. Do. It's an addiction. And he's like really the, worried about the frogs being gay, too, which concerns me. It's like, I wonder that's, how that's he determines big, that. Yeah, and he has trouble opening pickle jars, frogs, pickle jars. I don't, there's something going on there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> But I, I know that the fact that the frogs are like gay now really have him like concerned. So, just saying. Maybe transgender well, next. Maybe, maybe possibly. And in the second hour, I promise you, no gay frogs, no performance artists, nothing like that. Thank you, Daniel Lewis Crumpton. Go to downloadedcontent.com and check out his work. Barry Prince is going to stick with me through the second hour. And guys, I also promise you, no performance art in the second hour. Stay tuned to the Ocelli Effect. We'll be right back. He's real. He's real. Second hour begins with the Ocelli Effect here on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Of course, my broadcast location is somewhere within the confines of Frankie's Playroom, because that is the whole house. Anyway, 
Daniel Lewis Crumpton is stuck around with me here in the second hour. Co-host Barry Prince is with me, and we will be joined by Dean Clifford shortly. But uh, it it it's definitely was a fascinating first hour if you missed it. Um, meanwhile, there's other things going on in the world, <laughs> okay? And uh, we have discussed some of those things at length. I don't hammer on them every single day. I definitely didn't want to get involved in the news cycle today because it was just repetitive and noisy. So, Daniel, uh, you got something coming up this week of interest, or maybe two things coming up this week of interest, don't you? Yeah, uh, two things. Uh, yeah, well, well, I guess the first thing is uh, I'm going to be on your show. Uh <laughs> No, uh, any, anybody who's uh, follows me on Facebook or anything, I have finally been invited back to do Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis on 420. Uh, so anybody who uh, is a cannabis activist or a Clyde Lewis uh, fan, uh, I'm going to be on there. What time? It's going to be 8 to 10 Pacific, and it'll be 11 Eastern. Um, I'm going to be on there to talk about uh, genetically modified cannabis and the CannaSense program. Uh, which I'm a caregiver for. Anybody who's interested in the uh, CannaSense program, which uh, uh, allows you to become a cannabis medical patient in any of the 50 states, go to downloadedcontent.com, click on the uh, CannaSense Total Wellness at the top, and there's actually a new pop-up box that popped up. If you want me to contact you personally to uh, get you through the program, get you legal, and get you access to clean uh, medical cannabis, go ahead and put your information in there, and uh, I'll be in touch with you to help guide you through it. So I'm going to be talking about that uh, on Clyde Lewis, with, uh, on Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis this week. Uh, and there's also going to be in Atlanta, because you guys know me and Chuck are in Georgia, um, there's going to be a 420 rally in Atlanta behind the Capitol building at Liberty Park. Um, I'll try to drop the link for that in your in your chat here in a minute if I ever figure out how to log back in. So I <laughs> might I might be making an appearance at the 420 rally. I, ha- I don't really know yet because... I really want to make sure that I, I get the message of Canisense out to uh, Clyde Lewis's audience, uh, to as many people uh, as can can hear it. Because, you know, for me, this is an important thing, and uh, mm, it's it's very. it's a it's you know I I will sponsor just about anybody, um, and I've said this over and over and over again. When I wake up in the morning and I check my messages, I get messages from people who have children with autism or people who have seizures or people with PTSD or people with cancer who are thanking me for giving them the information and help helping them to, to get access uh, to medical marijuana in the mail, shipped straight to them legally. Uh, and it's so fulfilling. And, you know, unlike, you know, I actually promote things that I believe in because I use them and they work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, so I'm not going to sit here and promote CannaSense if I didn't personally go through what I help other people go through, and and it, it helped to transform my life and see it transform the lives of others. So uh, nice. yeah, that's that's what I got going on this week, man. I'm going to be on Ground Zero. I'm really excited about it. I, ha- I hadn't been on his show in about a year, and so I'm really looking forward to it. Cool. Mm. We're going to have to no. do a show one day, Daniel and me, because uh, I share your passion. Yeah, and I something mean, I talk about a lot. So. We're going to have to do a show one day on that. Yeah, and, and, you know, and I, I've, I had a conversation today with, with some people, because in the deep, deep south, you're in the Bible Belt, and not only does the legality of cannabis come up, but the, the whole stigma uh, of it being of the devil or something like that. Uh, mm, the gateway you know, flow. Yeah, and so I've just started, I had a conversation with somebody about it today, and I said, you know, I just look at people who have reservations about cannabis, like uh like Chris Rock used to say, they still make you? <laughs> what are you, a Betamax? <laughs> you know, it's like, how, how, how in the age of the Internet with instant information can you have any negative things to say about cannabis as a healing herb that was put here by a creator that wants you to have the best possible life you can have? And you know, I, I, I don't understand it, so... You know, I think that we need to, to, all of us need to destroy the stigma that the government put on cannabis use, um, you know, way back when, when, when whenever. You know, and, and the whole idea now that it, it does seem to be an issue that is inevitable, uh, decriminalization. Um, big Pharma is jumping in there now, and so they mm-hmm. want to create different strains of genetically modified cannabis so they can patent it and copyright it and pump you full of it and right now we have an opportunity with CannaSense uh to to go around these politicians 
you know, I'm a big advocate for ignoring politicians and just doing stuff yourself. And Canasense mm-hmm. has finally found a way for us to do that, and it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Well, I think on Wednesday night we're going to have to focus on that again uh, because I have some questions, and uh, I, I have some things that I think we need to discuss about it because, uh, look, it, it makes all the sense in the world if you're not worried about certain things. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I want to get into it a little bit. And, uh, and and discuss, you know, discuss some of the ins and outs of it that, that you're probably going to get, you know, you're probably going to get some of the ridiculous phone calls on Clyde show, uh, you know, about how, you know, you're promoting drug use and blah, 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 and all that kind of nonsense. But, uh, you know, reality is reality, man. If you haven't caught up to the idea that this is just a plant, for God's sake, you know. <laughs> the reality is, Chuck, that if you are still in that stigma, then you haven't spent a couple hours on the internet in your life mm. looking at the hardcore information about cannabis and what it can do to the human body. I mean, the stigma that's in our society, uh, it, it boggles my mind that some people still, when you say the word marijuana, they cringe and they look at you like you're trying to give them something that's going to kill them. That well, stigma see, still exists. But, but see, I, I all I can say word, to that. But hang on, well, I cringe at the word marijuana anyway because I don't think that that's proper. Well, uh, no, well, that's the word put on it by by um, individuals in 1939, and it was never prior, uh, I believe it was 1934, was that name ever applied to the cannabis plant, and it was done that to demonize the plant, just like Rufer Madness. The advertising campaigns came out because they knew they couldn't push plastics, they couldn't push pharmaceutical drugs, they couldn't push all the crap that's killing our planet today if this plant continued to be in existence. I mean, I get into conversations. One of the best conversations you can have, folks, when you want to open people's eyes to the cannabis plant or the hemp plant is ask them if they'd like to build a house that doesn't burn. Well, you think about that for two minutes because hempcrete, literally, you can make hempcrete that will not ignite. It won't even light if you hold a blowtorch to it. And this has been proven over and over again. Well, right there alone, just that argument, just that thought, you put that into people's heads and you say to them, hey, man, how would you like to stop deaths and fires every year? How many hundreds of millions of dollars would be saved? How many thousands of people suffering grief every year from people being burned or killed in a fire would we eliminate in two generations if we implemented hempcrete in a mass scale across the planet henceforth we stop deforesting the planet which we need more now for oxygen production than we've ever needed before we see the plankton dying our oxygen production dying and we're deforesting the planet at an incredible rate it can all be turned around by growing industrial hemp period and that's just one aspect one aspect of a thousand of a thousand daniel and Go ahead. Any, any of these people who are standing in the way, whether they be politicians or whatever, standing in the way of people making a personal choice to use cannabis as a medicine specifically for post-traumatic stress disorder, which I, you know, I openly say that I've, ha- I, I've had, uh, I, I think they should volunteer to be traumatized. <laughs> and, mm. and, and, and then, you know, hey, if you want to go with Big Pharma, okay, let me know how that works out after you stick your kid in a blender. Uh, or, you know, maybe you can give cannabis a try and see if it actually alleviates your flashbacks and allows you to get some sleep. You know, it's mm. why do these people have the power to keep other people sick and in horror and in terror and in, in places of suffering? You know what I'm saying? These, a lot of these people who are, who are in politics are, are mm. Bible thumping, you know, and it's like, dude, for real? How, how can you heal the world? And, and you're standing in the way of a person making a personal choice to get better, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. When you're still indoctrinated into the medical system and you're filling your body full of analyticals, um, how can you stand there and say that this is working? Because it's not. I mean, we're, the, we're what Roger Landry said this before. And I, I looked at the stats on health of the human race in North America in the last 40, 50 years, and it's just a tremendous slide downwards. Well, so what's going on in our society? Well, we're being forced, we're being manipulated by big farming through all kinds of different avenues in our society. Oh, and sure. of course, our doctors are still pushing pills like crazy. You can go to a doctor one week, he'll give you a prescription. Go two weeks later, he'll give you another one. Well, I'll tell but they're you all what, analyticals. I, I'll tell you what, Barry, our troops ain't in Afghanistan garden uh, uh, cannabis fields, are they? No, no, they're not, Daniel, because there's not enough money in that. There's not enough criminality. There's not enough addiction. There's not enough crime connected with it. But heroin addicts are a different animal. Yeah, sure. You look at the opiate situation in the United States of America right now, it's rampant, and it's being promoted through 
all government agencies, feeding Oxycontin to 11 years old now, and you figure that's okay. Well, You're you. making drug addicts for a right. And then we could talk about Ritalin for five minutes, Daniel. There's just another example well, of I, a disease formulated in a psychiatrist's office I was having and a con- treated. I was having a conversation with regular Joe earlier, and uh, I wanted to make the point that, you know, uh, and Chuck, you know this for a fact, um, we live in the state of Georgia, and in the state of Georgia, we have the biggest private uh, for-profit prison system in the country, for one, and we also have the mm-hmm. largest uh, population of, of people addicted to crystal methamphetamine. Do you think there's a connection there? Mm. I don't know. Can I tell you a personal story for two minutes, See, Daniel? Well, well hang, hang on after, just a second, because okay, well, here's a point that, that's not being made. Uh, and, and that is that even when you look at opium itself, opium without the refinement, without them getting a hold of these exactly. things and twisting them into something else, even the coca plant, okay, which, yeah. you know, obviously cocaine, but if you just take and use the plant itself, it's not that destructive. It can be a positive medicine. Uh, so can opium, actually. But when you take it and you refine it and you do all these mm. things to it and add these activators and add all of these mm. petroleum-based pieces of Mix crap it. to it, which is one of the things that I'm worried about with, with the cannabis thing at this point, mm. is that Big Pharma is going to take that at some point mm. and introduce it into their crap storm of, of garbage, and it's going to become something else. Okay, because you don't get there's not fields of oxycodone in Afghanistan. Those are poppy plants. Poppy plants have more than one use. So do coca plants. So do cannabis plants. Okay, all of these things, if they're left in their natural form, have uses. Mm. Very simple. You deal with them as a botanical, not as a chemical. Mm. How, you know, how hard is that to understand? So exactly. the whole thing, and, and one last point, and then I'll shut up and let you guys get back to it. But one last <laughs> point is that I went through being uh, uh, drugged, okay, uh, as a younger person for all sorts of nervous conditions. Uh, the most profound one having been, I was diagnosed when I was barely, barely in, in double digits in age with PTSD. The only thing that has ever fully alleviated that um, is actually cannabis. It's not something that, that, that I would even need on a daily basis to deal with that problem. But you know what? When things get going in the wrong direction, you, you, you introduce that into your system, and it quiets all of that stuff down. I, I, interesting correlation. You know, because PTSD was one of those things that didn't seem to exist until a couple of generations ago. Yeah, well, you know what I mean? It was shell shock then. You know. you know, I know that Bill Hicks was was doing a gag when he said it should be mandatory, but there's a lot of truth to that, man. If our if if our society in this country would embrace cannabis use on a massive level, you would wow. see a lot of this stuff on a global scale come down like a lot. Because I'm sorry, we're the bullies on the block, man, and we de- we need to as a people chill out. We need to mm. chill out, dude. And I'm telling you right now, before you know these individual states start legalizing it and Big Pharma gets their knuckles in there, you know that's why I'm I'm advocating Canasense so much because the main part of Canasense is that you get your medical cannabis ID card to make you legal in whatever state that you're in. At that point, you're not uh, beholden to a prescription from a doctor who's getting kickback from Big Pharma. Which is all of them, man. All of them. You know? Mm-hmm. This, and, and look, dude, the, uh, Jordan Page, who's a great guy, he's also a caregiver for cannabis. This dude hasn't touched cannabis since over 17 years. All right? Over 17 years. If you don't feel the need to personally use cannabis as a medicine, that's fine. But you know what? Don't stand in somebody else's way of it being an option to live better. To alleviate some suffering, man. That's your duty. No matter what spiritual proclivity you happen to be or not. Don't sit there and say that, that, that you follow this healer or, or that great physician. But you're willing to take action or partake in a system that prevents people from getting better. Don't, you know, don't be a hypocrite, man. Don't do that. Uh, if, if you hear me talking about cannabis or cannabis and you don't need to use it, you know somebody who does need to use it. You do. Carried a message, brah. 
Mm. It's real. It's real. <laughs> Watch out, Daniel, because when Monsanto gets their hands on it, eventually they'll modify this to a point where the uh, actual healthy ingredients in this incredible plant will be taken out and synthesized. Okay. And that I say that, you know why I say that, Daniel, because they don't, a, a healthy society is the last thing that they want because a healthy society isn't con- going to continue even though they've added cannabis or so-called cannabis to their regimen, uh, is continually going to be coming sick even though they're doing this so-called new wonder plant. But it's not going to be what it's intended to be. And that's one of my biggest fears, them getting control of this. It'll never be what it was intended to be. We should have free access to this plant. We should be allowed to make our fiber and our food and our medicine out of it the way it was intended. But government control, it will never, ever, ever go that way in society. So my my stance is against any government controlling something that was put on this planet and has thousands and thousands of benefits to the human being. It's Mm. It's an absolute crime. In our society, it is one of the biggest crimes that I can think of in our society now that this plant is being condemned, being held back from society, trying to be controlled by government entities. But like I said, they don't want a healthy society. If everybody had, Daniel, I I say this, and I mean it, that if everybody had a big jar of real high-grade THC-laden oil beside their bed, and every night before they went to bed, they had a little shot of that. And in the morning when they wake up, basically the THC effect is gone. But your body's absorbed the, T, the, the, the CBDLs and the CBDs. And the cannabinoids have, have done their, their chemical reaction in your brain. I mean, the endocannabinoid system in the body, guys, I, I can't even begin to explain it. I can't. I've looked at it. I've, I've had Dr. Allen on many of my shows. And, you know, he'll explain it to me, how the signaling system works, why it is so effective in the human body. But the World Health Organization made a very, very powerful statement about the discovery of the endocannabinoid system in the human body four years ago. And their statement was that this is the greatest discovery in medical science in the 20th century. Yet we only see still 13% of universities teaching it in the United States of America. Our mission really, folks, is just to keep hammering this out to people, showing them simple facts that will resonate inside their own lives. And like I said earlier, you can talk about fire prevention. You can talk about the amount of water that's used when we produce hemp fiber as opposed to cotton. The amount of chemicals that are in our water when we, use, when we produce hemp fiber as opposed to cotton. Everything about it, um, if you look at it, it's everything about it. I have never yet looked at one issue with a hemp plant as opposed to what we're doing in society today. That doesn't make what we're doing in society today look barbaric. That's the bottom line. We have to embrace the plant because our planet, you know, and I know, without being a fear, fear monger, is our planet's dying. And that's not bullshit. Excuse my language, Chuck. That's a fact. So what would offset that right now on this planet? What you said, Daniel, earlier is so true that if we could embrace this plant worldwide, I mean, really demand that. Everything we're doing, we can make plastics now out of a hemp-based material that becomes biodegradable, becomes part of the earth five months after it's made. There's a company in Germany starting to manufacture these, and they're going to be on the market. Everything we're doing can be replaced with hemp, but without a detrimental effect to the planet. Everything we're doing today, from our power to our medicine to our water, everything. There isn't anything that I could talk about that... Hemp would be a no. It would be a no-brainer, and tell me if I'm wrong, Daniel. So you're absolutely spot on because I look at big picture right now. I look at what's going on on my planet. I look at the biosphere. I look at the breakdown in all our systems. What's happening to our trees? Our planet is being polluted right now at an incredible rate, and that's not that's not fear mongering. That's you know I can. I can prove all this stuff because I've really gone to the bottom of it. I I make sure that I vet this information, but it's true. Our planet's dying, and we could offset it right now simply by really embracing this thing worldwide. Fill these planes, fill them full of hemp seeds, and instead of spraying chemicals at our sky for three years, Daniel, cover the world in industrial hemp. You know, what what I find ironic about it is... Think uh, about that. 
<laughs> what I find ironic about it is, you know, I, I, I've said this a lot. Me and my dad used to have discussions about it, and, and he would say, you know, I, I just, I, know, I believe in a God. I just don't understand why there's so much suffering in the world. And, and it took me a while to find the answer for him. But my it answer, was free will. My, well, my answer was there's suffering in the world because there's suffering within us, you know. And I'm so thankful for developing PTSD. I'm so thankful for, you know, suffering from uh, alcoholism. Because if I hadn't had those ailments, I would not be able to empathize or identify with other people out there who are in pain. I wouldn't be able to see the mm. world through that lens. And, you know, and Chuck, you know personally that I've been a chronic insomniac most of my adult life, if not all of my adult life. You've seen me stay up for days, okay, mm -hmm. days on end without being able to sleep. And, you know, for, that's why... With PTSD, you develop insomnia, and then comes uh, alcohol or drug addiction because it's like, I need something to make me unconscious, okay? Because my sleep cycle is just destroyed. And, you know, CannaSense came along and gave me the avenue to access my medicine, and it is a medicine, uh, regularly, you know, on a consistent basis, and it be clean, and I don't have to risk arrest or dealing with somebody who may shoot me when I turn my back or whatever, uh, I, I sleep eight hours a day. And it's, I mean, two minutes after I close my eyes, I am mm. out, dude. Boom. <laughs> and I wake up completely refreshed, uh, so creative, you know, the, the, and at peace. And, you know, life is just so much better. It tastes so much better, life. Well, see, now that's the other thing I wanted to interject here because both you and I, um, and, and here I'm, I'm going to reveal a little bit of personal information, but uh, both you and I also suffer from uh, a, a chronic, let's just call it disturbed sleep uh, as well. So even when you are sleeping, you're not necessarily getting rest. Um, and I'm very sure that when you're waking up feeling a lot more refreshed, it's because you were actually relaxed in your sleep. And, uh, you know, half of the stuff that Big Pharma pushes on you to do the same type of job, uh, you know, has all these wonderful side effects to it. Uh, you know, the, the, these uh, sleepwalking events and everything. I have never heard of a single person in my entire life, and may, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I've never heard of a single person sleepwalking or blacking out from the use of cannabis. Mm-mm. No, and see, that was one of the things I didn't know uh, after I did uh, make my appointment um, when, when I was going through CannaSense. You know, and I know a lot about cannabis. And, um, you know, uh, you seem, you know, I used to be a, like almost addicted to, to goodie PMs or, or BCPM, sleeping pills in general. Um, and when I was talking to my doctor, um, he, you know, he, he said, well, obviously, you know that cannabis is going to help you rest. And he explained to me why. He said, well, you know that whenever you use cannabis, it takes you to a different frequency than REM sleep. You don't have REM sleep. And so you're mm. not having flashbacks from your PTSD, and it's allowing your brain to actually rest. Because anybody with PTSD out there, you know your brain doesn't rest, man. Your brain does not rest because you're consistently asking yourself, what was that noise? What was that light? What's that sound? Where is so-and-so? You know, who, who is here? Who is the, your, those questions, your brain does not shut down, even when you're mm. asleep. But, you know, since right. I became a member of CannaSense and since I get my medicine on a consistent and, and regular basis, man, I'm out, dude. I'm sorry. I'm sleeping. <laughs> and it's good, too. You know. Well, I never have a problem sleeping, so. <laughs> but I always make sure I uh, ingest a little bit before bedtime. So I have a, a gentleman here in, in town here who had a real hard time sleeping, guys, and I, I gave him some uh, or got him some high-grade oil. And what he's doing at night now is he's taking about a quarter of a gram. And he's not waking up with any buzzy, but he says his sleeps have never, ever been better. So there's lots to be said about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I, and, you know, I, lack, lack of restful sleep will kill you, too. I mean, this is something oh, that people don't know. No, uh, you need it. it. it your mind and your body. Yeah, I mean, it, it physically uh, uh, debilitates you if, if you're not getting a restful amount of sleep at some point. You know, when you're a little younger, you can run around quite a bit and you can, you know, push through the pain, let's say. But uh, quite honestly, you, you get a little bit older. And even when I was younger, I struggled uh, with, not, with not being able to sleep and uh, not being able to sleep restfully when I did. So, yeah. 
no, these are essentials. You know, sleep is as essential to the human being as now. Now, the amount of sleep differs. Everybody has a different amount they need, but sleep is as essential as food or water, and uh, and people don't realize that. Um, so you know, when you're in a disturbed sleep cycle constantly, okay, and you don't get that chance to rest and you don't get that chance to decompress, uh, it literally makes you unhealthy, not only psychologically but physically. Um. Something I want to point out because I've experienced it. So, you know, there we go. But uh, also, you know, the the chronic disturbances like you were talking about during REM sleep, these are uh, these are part of the package when it comes to uh, any of these traumatic based uh, injuries. Let's just call them to the psyche. Okay, uh, you have nightmares, you have uh, terrors, you have easy disturbances, you have. Uh, being startled out of your sleep, you have uh, a variety of things that mean that you're not really at rest. Is that accurate, Daniel? Man, uh, it, it's it's it like and and me and you both know it's hard to explain PTSD and and how it affects your psychology if you don't have it. But yeah. and, and it's a rough topic, but. When you have it and there's no relief or there's poor choices for the relief that you can get, you never, you, you know, you've ever heard of the term sleeping with one eye open. That's something that consistently happens. I mean, mm-hmm. any, any little noise. And, you know, and you, you know, I, I'm sure you wouldn't mind. I mean, you told your audience you have PTSD before, and I can attest that's the truth because, you know, the, very, the smallest thing has you investigating. And I can spot that because I'm the same way, you know, whenever I'm not, you know, using my medicine. It's like, what was that? What was and, and certain people who don't have PTSD think, oh, he's just being nosy. No. He's, he's securing his surroundings, buddy. Okay? Mm. Um, I know what it's like to walk around with a four millimeter at three o'clock in the morning checking all the doors. You know, and cannabis, and, and, and 99% of the time, it's unwarranted. It's, it, it's stuff that your imagination is putting there for you to be afraid of. You know, and whenever you you get that taken care of, you actually have to stop and think about something that is there to worry about. And it's not much. You know, it's like, did I heat my dinner up enough? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. And and life becomes what it's supposed to be, which mm. is um, a mm. gift. It, it becomes a gift and not a prison sentence. Yeah, well, the reason the reason why I'm describing some of this is because there's probably people out there that are going through some of these things and don't necessarily identify it as PTSD. Um, but I, but I'm gonna ident- I'm gonna explain something here. Just just take me a minute. Uh, wh- I know what you're referring to directly. And the first time that I think you saw it, it was probably about four o'clock in the morning, and uh, him and I are in the same house, and he was awake because he couldn't sleep. And uh, not really making noise or anything in the house in general. And I'm in a separate room all the way in the one side of the house. I literally have to get up, get out of bed, go around and check everything. Uh, you know, is there an entrance that's open? Is there something in the house that's not supposed to be there? Is there, uh, you know, all of that. It's a 20-minute operation. Literally going outside to go check the perimeter on the property. Um and why? Because otherwise, it, I, I really don't have another answer for why. It's just this is what I have to do um, um, in order to reimagine that I can uh, uh, relax again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and, you know, if you're doing this kind of thing, it, it's, not, it's not because, you know, you're, you're, you're a psycho, you know. The, the, these are the kind of problems that emerge. And um, so, you know. Uh, does that sound about right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, whenever the, whenever a traumatic event happens to you, you you feel if you're a decent human being anyway, you feel no matter how distant from the truth it may be that you're responsible in some way, or you you fail to do something correctly or in a timely manner, and the that traumatic event instills in you and rewires your brain to where you make a decision to where it's never going to happen again and you feel the weight of the universe on you that you must control every circumstance in your existence and protect everyone and yourself and it's dude that's an impossible task 
that's an impossible task, and it puts you on pins and needles, you know? Hey, uh, Chuck, Dean Clifford finally made it into the show. <laughs> How you doing, Dean? Hello. Sorry to interrupt How's it going? you there. Good. <laughs> oh, sorry, I, I knew you had a little bit uh, delay getting home, but uh, yeah, thanks for coming you know, in. Not a problem. This whole trying to get my life in order thing, eh? And uh, yeah. you know what? Honestly, it's a little bit of a bad on my part, too. I, I, I don't think I quite got the... Uh, intent from earlier today i thought we were all we were going to have a conversation at some point tonight uh, about doing a little future kind of show type thing then i was like when i, I got know, your I message earlier you. and i was in the city i was like oh shit i think that's supposed <laughs> to be tonight i ambushed you dean sorry buddy but i you know uh, I, wanted, I wanted to introduce you to chuck and yep. daniel lewis crumpton's with us tonight um so um you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get right in and let you have a chance tell people what you're doing because we only got a half hour left in the show dean and i know you need more time than that to tell people what you're doing but just kind of hit on what you've been doing for the last couple years and what you're all about yeah well obviously hold on just a second dean sorry 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 chuck (laughs) hold on got ahead of myself again okay Hang okay. on just a second, because I'd like to explain to the listener what's happening. Uh, you know, Dean, Dean Clifford was supposed to join us earlier, according to apparently a little miscommunication like you just heard. But uh, definitely, we're going to have to have you back on, Dean, because, uh, you know, the last 25 minutes of the show is not going to do any justice for you. We were in the midst of a discussion about PTSD, that's for sure. And I think, Daniel, we need to continue this discussion on Wednesday. Um, and, and get into it a little more, if you don't mind. What do you think? That sounds like a plan with me, man, because, like I said, I empathize. I, I know what it's like, and I know you do, too, and it's about making other people who are out there who are on their wits end get better, dude, because people who've gone through it, when you come through it, they're the best people in the world, and they accomplish things that change the world. 